Ready for my single bro? Oh, oh, hi there. Just listening to that latest single from one of those Drag Race girls. <laughs> where was I? Oh, hi, I'm James Mansfield, and welcome to Drag Herstory, the show where we salute the girls who laid the foundation by applying one. Funny enough, I should mention music because today's show is about just that. Now, drag queens and music go hand in hand. One can rarely exist without the other. But what if a drag queen decides she wants to sing for herself? What kind of music would she make? Well, the results may surprise you in just how diverse drag queen music has been throughout the years. We begin with Divine, who embarked on a singing career after she gained much notoriety in John Waters' films. A few years had passed since female trouble and Divine was carving out her own path. She had gained some success in stage plays like The Neon Women. Hi, Hi girls. I just got back from my annual Paris trip. <laughs> and even found herself in San Francisco working with the Cockettes. She was approached by a producer, Bobby Orlando, near the beginning of the 1980s about making high energy dance music. Stand up like a man and look me in the eye. Turn around. Take one final look at what you the left behind. She would go on to release such dance floor hits like Native Love, You Think You're a Man, and she even covered Frankie Valli's Walk Like a Man. Walk like a man, talk like a man, walk like a man, my son. No woman's worth falling on the earth, so walk like a man, my son. What, what exactly do you see yourself as? I mean, I'm saying you're featuring very much in these essentially gay charts, but do you see yourself as something more? Well, I mean, I see myself as an entertainer. I mean, anyone that wants to listen to me, I'm glad to have them as a fan and as a listener. I mean, I've been on the the, the other charts too. I mean, in Sweden and Germany and Holland on the main charts. Uh, in London, I think, uh, though in England, um, mainly on the, the Boys Town charts. Divine's musical career took on national success or enjoyed a lot of airplay in Europe. Divine's heavy voice partnered with savage, high-energy beats made for a delicious combination. Her last song was a collaboration with the Bronsky beat, Cha Cha Heels, which Divine would not be able to record due to her passing in 1988. The song was later recorded by Eartha Kitt. So don't you mess around with me, you won't know what to do. But I'll put on my Cha Cha Heels and walk all over you. Give me, give me Cha Cha Heels. All I want is Cha Cha Heels. And it was fabulous. But one cannot help but wonder the song that could have been. Next is the queen of disco herself, Sylvester. Sylvester James was a high-pitched, unapologetically flamboyant character of the 1970s. His vocals were rooted in gospel, but its strict belief system drove him away to San Francisco, where he found success in the emerging disco scene. When Sylvester initially moved to San Francisco, he found refuge with the group The Cockettes, where he became such a standout that he was signed to a record deal. I think what's so fantastic about Sylvester is how little of a shit he gave Given the time period he existed in, he didn't care if you thought he was too flamboyant, too feminine, or if his presence truly just made you uncomfortable. Most notably, his appearance on The Late Show where he does not mince words about his sexuality. Yeah, look at your jewelry. All right, That's you, my wedding set. That's your wedding set. All right. Who are you married to? To not Rick. Uh, <laughs> Let me ask. Oh, God. I you... can... I'm sorry. No. no. What? Rick's parents are watching. Yeah? <laughs> Surprise! Sylvester's success could not be ignored. He toured all over the world and even cracked such mainstream shows like Soul Train, American Bandstand, and Top of the Pops. The most important thing is that his music made you dance. I've seen some of the most straight masculine of men sing along to Mighty Real when it comes on in department stores, which really says something about Sylvester's reach and what his music does for people. Real. 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 
It truly says something about an artist's impact. He was an influential artist that was sadly taken away from us far too soon. We move on to Jane County, now a trans icon. She was a pioneer in the budding punk rock scene in the 1970s. She was an actress in Andy Warhol's factory. Well, I love Andy, but I just don't trust him. Why? Why? Because he has power. A rioter in Stonewall, and a major influence for such singers like Iggy Pop, Patti Smith, and the Ramones, and arguably the biggest inspiration for Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Jane performed in such legendary places like Max's Kansas City, CBGB, and even appeared in films like Jubilee, Wigstock, Andy Warhol's Pork, and the punk rock movie. Jane County style took no prisoners. She could cut it up on stage and shoot the shit in interviews with ease. <laughs> She was, in essence, a little too influential for her time. The world just wasn't ready for Jane County yet, and she never really enjoyed that mainstream success that she truly deserved. I wish I had a time I wish I had a time She remains a major influence in the world of punk rock music. Now the world of drag queen music is so vast and varied that I could do a whole mini series on just drag queen music alone. I really had to pick hairs and really narrow it down to the artists I truly wanted to feature. But here are a few honorable mentions that didn't quite make the cut this episode. Touch my money, you took too much. And now we end our program with the Queen Mother herself. No, not that one. Could you imagine what her record would sound like? Ooh. No, this one. I have one thing to say. You better work. We close with the most successful drag queen of all time, RuPaul. Come on now, work. Oh, now work it, girl. RuPaul Charles rose to prominence in the early 1990s. Before that, he had worked as a go-go dancer, danced with the B-52s, performed in the punk rock band. even starred in some underground films before landing a record deal. The album was Supermodel of the World. And unlike any drag acts that had come before her, RuPaul truly blurred the gender lines. She had something everyone could get into. RuPaul was just the right amount of everything everyone needed. She was edgy enough for MTV, who played her video for Supermodel on heavy rotation, given the taste of music that was on there, like grunge and gangster rap. She was pretty enough for Joanne and Cletus in Ohio, who had never seen a drag queen on TV before. And to top it all off, she was truly Rawly and undeniably talented. Hey baby, uh, you got some film in that camera? Or are you just happy to see me? She was met with resistance from some critics who tried really hard to dismiss her as just a novelty act. But RuPaul has stood the test of time and has enjoyed a very successful second life in television and film. She went on to have a talk show on VH1, star in dozens of films, and is still making and breaking records to this day.
she carved out a career for herself which is going to be very hard to top. I have a feeling we'll be seeing a whole lot of Miss RuPaul for a long time. Well, that's our show today, kittens. I hope you learned something, and I look forward to hearing all of your latest singles. Well, now comes the time where I must take my bow. But fret not, this is not my swan song. In fact, why don't I sing us out? Ha! I got you.